Alright guys, we're going to look at uh, the idea of a hypothesis test. Um, so this is just the basics. We're going to do a lot um, a lot more with our calculator once we just kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. Alright, um, remember when we talk about rare events. Um, rare events, no normally that's when we've been talking about two standard deviations from the mean, um, the 5% cutoff, uh, but that they we're still using that the rare events are those still those two basic um, components that we've been talking about we're going to kind of tweak them a little bit in this section but that's still the basic idea all right but this is what the big idea about a hypothesis test is um, if under this given assumption that's a really important part and that's why it's really big and bolded and underlined here uh, we have an assumption made and if under that assumption the probability of what we see uh, some observed event is exceptionally small again there's that 0.05 or less usually uh, we're going to conclude that the assumption is not correct all right and I make the little note here it seems odd but we actually do make an assumption something is true to make the case that it's probably not true okay now it won't always be that way for the most time it is but there will be times where um, we're wanting to show something is extremely rare and that will support our claim rather than uh, prove somebody else's claim wrong but anyway that's the that's the way this hypothesis test works we make an assumption and then we prove that assumption can't be true okay um, the components in the language of a formal hypothesis test we have something called the null hypothesis and we use this little h this is a little subscript zero it's not H uh, O, it's H subscript zero, but a lot of people um, say uh, H O. But anyway, the uh, the null hypothesis is the claim. All right, we're making a claim. The value of a population. Remember, population parameter is like population mean, population proportion. They're the uh, values of the whole entire big uh, data set that you're studying, that you're sampling from. Okay, so it may be all uh, people in the United States and we're looking for a mean or guesstimating or estimating a mean uh, of all people in the United States all right or a proportion like uh, we we want to make a guess that 20 percent of uh, the proportion is left-handed or we want to make a guess that the average age of everybody in the United States is 46.2 years old okay that's um, parameters when we're talking about the population all right so we're making a, a, a hypothesis that it's equal to some value equal to not greater than not less than but uh, equal to and uh, then the null hypothesis is what we're going to test we're going to collect data from this population and we're going to either come up with a mean or come up with a proportion and we're going to compare uh, we're going to basically we're going to find out how rare is what we found how rare is what we found in our sample based on the claim of this uh, value of the proportion uh, or the mean of the population All right that's what we call uh, when we test the null hypothesis we either reject remember this is our notation for the null hypothesis we either reject that null hypothesis or we fail to reject it we don't ever accept it so we make a claim uh, our claim is made sometimes we gather evidence and our evidence will either support the fact that the alternate hypothesis is true and in that case we'll reject or if it doesn't support the claim that the alternate is true we don't accept the original claim we just fail to reject the original claim it's kinda like guilty and not guilty in, um, in a trial we don't ever say they're innocent we just say that either reject the the claim that the the defendant is innocent or we fail to reject it because the prosecution didn't provide enough evidence same thing here we're either going to reject the claim that the mean is equal to some value or the proportion is equal to some percentage or we're going to fail to reject it because our our uh, statistical data did not support that claim all right, H1, HA, um, some people use HA, we'll use H1 uh, in, in our examples. That's the alternate claim, all right? 
Uh, usually we use one of these three symbols because we're going to use equal to here for the, the uh, original claim. So we're going to do uh, equal to here. So we're going to use not equal to, less than, or greater than. Right? These just uh, are some form of the opposite of equal to. If something is, uh, one value is not equal to something, we can use this if we don't know which direction it is, but we just feel it's not equal. Or if we have an idea, we think it's not equal, and, and not only that, we think it's less, then we use the less than symbol, or we use the greater than symbol if we think it's greater. All right. Um, you want your study that you do to support your claim. Your claim needs to be worded so it can be the alternate hypothesis, right? Again, we reject or we fail to reject. If we reject, that supports the alternate hypothesis. If we fail to reject, that really doesn't support either one, right? It just doesn't support the alternate hypothesis. It, it, again, we do not do not ever accept the null hypothesis. So we want to write it to where uh, if we reject the null hypothesis, then uh, it supports that the alternate hypothesis is probably true. So that's the way we want to word our claim. Okay, so this is an example just to kind of get us set up for how this is going to work. Um, the claim is the mean uh, weight of airline passengers, including carry-on baggage, is 195 pounds, the current value used by the FAA. All right, we feel the mean weight is greater than this, and we want to identify the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. All right, now remember, this alternate hypothesis is the way we want to word our claim, right? We feel the mean weight is greater than this, right? So that's going to be our cl claim, greater than. We're going to use greater than for our claim, and we need, we have to use equal to for the original claim, okay? So... The mean, that's the population mean, that's what is we're making the claim about, is equal to 195, and we believe it's greater, so we believe the mean is greater than 195, right? So that means that our setup is going to be H0 is the null hypothesis, the mean is equal to 195 pounds. The alternate hypothesis, our, our belief, is the mean is actually greater than 195 pounds. When uh, when you see me ask you to set up the test, or uh, if a question asks you to set up the test, the hypothesis test, this is what we're looking for. What's the null and alternate hypothesis? So that's what you're looking for here. All right, test statistic. That's just a uh, value used in making the decision about the null hypothesis. It's really just a z-score, or once we get into a, a couple sections further, what we call a t-score. And it's found by converting what we get from our sample, our sample data, to either that Z or that T score. All right. Remember, the further, the bigger the Z score, the bigger the the number of standard deviations something is from the mean, the more rare it is. So that's what the test statistic is. It's just a number of uh, standard deviations. What we're seeing is away from the actual claimed mean. Uh, so that's that's the idea of a test statistic bigger it gets, the more rare the um, value that you just saw in your sample is. All right, here's the formulas for the test statistic. Uh, your calculator is going to compute a lot of these for you, but if you ever have to compute one by hand, here's your formulas. All right, so if you're doing a proportion hypothesis test, all right, the p hat here, this is the actual value from your data. Right, this uh, p is the claim. Right, the claim value. These are claim values. Remember, q represents one minus p. Right, when we're doing proportions. These are numbers between zero and one. These are numbers between zero and one as well, because one minus a number between zero and one also is between zero and one. Right, so that's your uh, value from your data set, your sample proportion. This is the claim population proportion. This is one minus the claim population proportion, all right, and then this is your sample size. All right, if you're doing it for a mean, uh, if they give you a claimed mean and a claimed standard deviation, then those will go here, all right? If uh, and then you run your data and you'll get your sample mean. 
Okay, so that's your sample mean, your claim population mean, the claim population standard deviation, and then your uh, sample size again. All right, T, that's the one I've been talking about. It's a new one. Same thing, except they're not going to give you the claim standard deviation. They're, you're going you're gonna to run it along with your sample mean from your sample data. Okay, so that's what's going on here. The claim value that's given to you in the wording of the problem the actual sample mean that you get from your data set. Right. If you need to compute the standard deviation you're on from your sample, then that's a T. If you don't, if they're giving you the population deviation, then that's a Z test.